Hello and welcome to Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics. Uh, this is Cyrus. Hope everyone is doing well in whatever crazy situation you happen to be in. Or boring situation. It can be crazy and can be boring. I think my situation is more in the line of crazy. But uh, for many of you all, it's time to hang out at home and play video games. And that's perfectly good as well. So in this video, we are talking about how vulnerable is the astral body. Some philosophical concepts, some metaphysical concepts. And a story to tell as well from the forum, from myself. And I think this will be interesting, entertaining, informative, weird, confusing, distressing. I don't know. You never really know. But um, hopefully you guys will enjoy it. So before we go further, you are watching Afterlife Topics. We basically talk about the mechanics, the functions, the details of life in realms beyond this one. Uh, I think I am the only, one of the only people doing this in this specific angle, in this specific way. So special thanks to all the patrons and you guys who have supported this work for so long and supported this channel and are keeping this community going so well. Uh, so special thanks to everybody. And uh, if you haven't done so yet, please go down, hit that subscribe button, notification bell, like the video, share the video, it helps YouTube know that the channel is still relevant. And uh, if you want to get involved with me personally, I have my, inf my information in the description down below, even on the bottom left side of the screen, down down there, you'll see my contact details, the Patreon, and all that. If you want to get involved, help the channel out and support the work. Okay, so to continue. So this is the story that I put up on the forum. Caused a little bit of controversy, understandably. I knew it would, but it's something that's come up before, and uh, I'm going to get to that. So... This is an astral trip I had last night, and I hadn't really had one in like six weeks, so I'm happy that I was, you know, having something happen again. So I would say confirmed astral travel because, um, you know, it's actually feeling yourself leave your body. That's the that's the, the distinction. So it's one thing to be lucid dreaming or just having weird dreams all night. It's something else when you're aware of yourself laying on your bed and then you do certain techniques to pull yourself out of your body and then you feel yourself leave your body you see for a split second your body laying on the bed you have a duplicate body then you then you phase into a different reality into a different environment and then the experience begins that's a true astral projection experience so that's why it's verifiable but by me not not by not by anybody else but by me so the the story goes, I saw my parents last night for the first time in a couple of months. It was always weird in astral trips because I leave my body, in this case in my apartment in the Philippines, and I find that I am in a different apartment, more like a little hotel room. There was this dingy hotel room that I was in. Uh, I have, there was a bed, there was like a mini bar, and there was a bathroom shower, and I was asleep on a bed in there. And when the astral projection began, I was literally like w w waking up in my bed in that hotel. So again, see the prior video to this one I'm talking about astral parallel astral parallel selves. If you want to, you know, illustrate what that what that's all about. So um, right, so I you know so it's like I commandeered my astral parallel self. I happened to be checked into some dingy hotel somewhere. I have no idea. I didn't. I don't. I didn't gain any memory back about this. Uh, so I was laying in that bed of sleep, and then my parents appeared. You know, they, they just phased in, you know, that's just how they do it over there. It's just like, what, if, what are those old TV shows like Bewitched, where they just like, poof, or I, I, I Dream of Genie, right? So they, you just, you know, they just poof, you know, appear, and that's what they do over there. That's normal. My parents appear, and I talk to them. And uh, it was funny. I mean, I think my father was... Uh, aware I was traveling in the astral side and so he brought me like a backpack and some stuff very typical of my father it's like hey Cyrus I brought you a bunch of stuff so you can you know if you in case you're out doing this and you, you find a you find some pretty rocks I have a little satchel you can put the rocks in and I found some in case you you know in case you uh, get hungry I have some snack bars and this, this kind of stuff you know pretty typical but because my my wires were being crossed I was confusing my memory there, my memory here, and I was like, Dad, if you give me a backpack, you know that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm on a different reality frequency wavelength. I can't exactly take the backpack back with me to Philippines, but I, I didn't put two and two together. He was giving me stuff in reference to me traveling on that side and not on this side. It's so convoluted, isn't it? Anyway. 
Um, so then at some point the scene shifts. I'm no longer even in the hotel room. I'm back in the family house, or I should say family mobile home. <laughs> and he says, oh, rather I asked my, my, my father, I thought we were in a hotel room. Why am I back in the house? My father says, I was going to ask the same thing of you. What are you? What were you doing in that hotel room? Like they, they, they picked up my energy or they knew I was projecting somehow and then they, they phased in to meet me but they didn't know really know where I was or what I was doing there. And then I just kind of naturally phased back with them to the house. Again, it's like split second, um, split second telepathic teleportation. And it can, just, it can just happen immediately. And even while you're talking, barely even noticing it, you can be one place, next place, next place, next place. And then you think, oh, I, I have to go back here now. Then you just put yourself back there. It's instantaneous teleportation, which for them is as normal as driving a car here. And they do still drive cars there too. That's the funny thing because people do both. Sometimes, you know, uh, half the fun is the journey. And so that's why there's still traffic and streets and things like that and teleportation. It's a funny thing. It, it, when, when you project and you talk to people on that side, they even comment that it's funny. But they take a, people take a certain pleasure in driving. I, I understand as long as it's not like a Los Angeles or in this case, Philippines traffic. Um, anyway, uh, so my mother was wearing this really interesting outfit with a big silver pendant. It looked like something you'd see at the Oscars. It's this kind of like, I don't know, it looked kind of like this futuristic silver, light purple dress and had like these fringes or frills like this like this kind of spiky stuff sticking out of it and there was this big silver pendant and it, ju it just looked really cool you know but my mom always liked really interesting cool outfits it's very typical of her she was also an artist a designer and she could design you know she, she she could put a versace to shame she had amazing design skills so she probably made it herself anyway so now i want to get to the crux of the video i asked her about the c virus incident that I, you know, I can't mention I'll get YouTube will this video but I want to you know I'll, I'll use some shorthand to call it the C virus how it specifically of the astral world has experienced issues from it so this is the weird thing so she said that she quote knew about a, a uh, P A N D E M I C and it caused some commotion one tea break including people wearing face masks and things like that. But it kind of died out and then everything was back to normal. I had a minor astral experience a few weeks ago where I also saw people with face masks walking around. It's like, are people just delusional? So I asked her, why would it make a difference in the astral world if no one can get sick? And then she said that people do get illnesses in the less such as colds and small flus and things like that. Which is why during a, an event like this, because our worlds are so closely interconnected with each other, including stuff from this world copying over to that side, which meant that this, the, the, the C virus, not to be confused with this, you can just call it the Cyrus virus, right? It kind of rhymes, Cyrus the virus. But no, I mean, I didn't, I, I was sick with it, I didn't cause it. Um, whatever, you know, whatever we can use instead of calling it what it is, because again, the video will get censored. So just call it the C virus, uh, the Cyrus virus, whatever. Okay, so um, something like that, a C virus can still copy itself over to that side. And as a result, people were still cautious, even on the astral earth, wearing face masks. Now, I... Um, you know, I, I thought this was very odd because I'm like, oh, you know, if no one can get sick. Why would they be worried about this? But she said that they still are. Now, the, the, the kicker is a couple of years back, I was having an astral trip and I surveyed some people. And I was one of the questions was about sickness or illness. And I got the same response. So these were kind of random people. I actually remember this was when I was traveling in Kuala Lumpur back in 2018. And I had a really good astral trip in a hotel. And a person on the astral spectrum from that location said that since he, since he crossed over, he's been aware that people get, again, a small illnesses, the likes of which are like colds and small flus. And he described it as like a slight nuisance. But still, people get those small sicknesses. But it seems like it caps off at that level of having like, you know, a cough and, you know, a runny nose. This did cause some 
controversy because people are saying, well, the other side is supposed to be perfect. There's not supposed to be any kind of illness or any kind of discomfort or anything like that. And to that I kind of respond like, why not? Paramahansa Yogananda, who wrote Autobiography of a Yogi, the original astral traveler, was quite adamant that the astral body is still vulnerable in certain ways. Going so far as to describe the unfortunate instances of astral warfare, basically warning people not to get caught up in systems like that, where you are involved in some kind of a war or a cosmic astral space war, and your astral body gets destroyed somehow and it leaves you incorporeal and feeling or forced or manipulated into reincarnating back on this side to get a new body again. And Yogananda, I, I recall from that book, and I made another video about this about this a long time ago, you can find it in the search box, um, talked about the, the threat of that type of thing happening. So don't get involved in joining some war or some ridiculous cause like that after you cross over if, if you're in an astral body. So according to Yogananda, the astral body is still vulnerable in many ways. So, but does this mean it's as vulnerable as the physical earth body? Well, obviously not, uh, to a point where, I mean, the astral body is, while well, this body you're in right now is made of energy, astral body is made of a kind of untethered energy. You know, keep, let's make it clear that everything is energy. All bodies are made of energy. The astral body is an untethered, faster, more powerful energy, which doesn't have the restrictions of this kind of uh, tethered, highly materialist, highly materialistic or physicalist body that you're in right now. But it doesn't mean it's not a body. It doesn't mean that it can't be vulnerable to things or it doesn't have biological function. That's one of the key points is that there's, even if it's, you could argue, generated by thought, made of pure energy, whatever it is you want to argue, those are almost close to philosophical points. The, the, the fact is, after that body is generated, whether it's generated from a mind, whether it's generated from a higher power, whether it's an energy system, whether it's a, whatever it is that makes the astral body into what it is, once it's there and once it's operating and existing in that world, it still seems to have a biological element to it. Maybe not as intricate as the biology in our bodies, but it still seems to be a biological vehicle of sorts. As a result, why wouldn't you get a cold? And from a higher spiritual vantage point, a virus can be good or bad, right? A virus is also an energy system that has a specific function. It's like programming code run amok. Now, a virus could theoretically be used to enhance all of our lives if a virus is programmed to, I don't know, upgrade our bodies or upgrade our DNA. Certain parts of the ET lore, the insider UFO crazy world that I sometimes delve into has talked about ETs using viruses to upgrade our DNA, that they'll unleash a virus that seems like a common cold, but really what it's doing is trying to make us into better people, better, that is to say, better physiological specimens. It's an interesting theory that I've heard about. I don't, I, you know, I've heard it in the, some of these, um, like I said, exopolitical sources have talked about this, which is, you know, again, fascinating. I can't say if that's true or not. It just, it's just something I want to toss out there. But philosophically, I think we can agree that a virus could be good or it could be bad. So it's like this pro, it's programming code run amok. And in this case, uh, why wouldn't there still be viruses on that side as well? that has the ability to in some way um, hijack the astral body or make it do what it wants to do. In this case, give you a runny nose, a little bit of a fever and some downtime. And I will say that I don't personally see a big problem with that because you get a cold. Sometimes that's a really, that's, that's a really nice time to take care of yourself, focus on yourself, take a little, take a little bit of downtime. And um, I don't know, like there's, 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 almost, there's almost zen-like quality to having just a normal cold, having a, having a serious illness like the C virus or a flu, that's, that, that's much worse. And of course, nobody wants to experience that. I think uh, the collective consciousness is such that very serious illnesses are not allowed to propagate because of such a strong desire to not allow them to propagate because everything is thought responsive on the astral level. So kind of in summary, the astral body does appear to have a level of vulnerability. If you choose to exist in a pure energy body, which is the other form of existence that quite a lot of people seem to gravitate towards, then you would not be vulnerable to anything that I'm aware of because you would not have any kind of coalescing of the, uh, the matter, the molecules into a, 
into a physical vessel, you're just a, an orb of light flying around, which sounds great, but also a lot of people choose to not be that way because they want to participate in an astral civilization or they want to, I don't know, they want to ride on a horse and f ride through a field and fulfill all their dreams of playing Dungeons and Dragons in real life. You know, whatever crazy fantasy you want to have, you can do all of that on the astral spectrum with a semi-physical astral biological body. Flip side is you do still vulnerabilities. And that's the impression I get from my own experiences. But I'm curious about is what are your experiences? Are you an astral traveler and can you confirm or deny what I learned? Because that's how we can grow the body of knowledge by you going out, you doing your experiments, you interviewing people on that side and coming back with information that we can all use. So please put in the comments down below if you've been able to confirm or deny some of this information. As always, thanks for watching. Head on over to afterlifetopics.com if I pick up a book like Understanding Life After DEATH, The Afterlife and Beyond, or read some, catch up with some of the articles I have up there, or check out the Facebook group Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics, or the Reddit group, uh, reddit.com forward slash r forward slash Afterlife Topics. That's a interesting, that growing community, a lot of interesting posts on there. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.